Beneath the crushing weight of the ocean in places where light has never set foot, death does not end with silence. Death becomes a beginning. The bones of whales, sharks, and great fish drift to the seafloor, and there, in the black silt, a second life awakens. Strange worms bloom, creatures without eyes, without mouths, without shame. They are called ostacks, the zombie worms. Their name means bone devourer. They are the undertakers of the deep, parasites of skeletons, feeding not on flesh but on marrow. Their bodies look nothing like worms we know. The females anchor into bone with root-like tendrils, drilling deep into the calcium as if planting themselves in a graveyard. Red, feathery plumes wave from their backs, not for show, but to breathe like gills. They do not eat in the way we imagine. Instead, their roots dissolve fat and protein locked inside the bones, releasing food where no predator dares to go. And the males. The males are so small they live as shadows, tiny dwarfs, permanent guests inside the body of the female. A single Ostax female can house dozens, even hundreds of microscopic males inside her tube-like body. A harem reversed, one queen with an entire kingdom of males living within her. A carnival of reproduction hidden inside a single worm. It is grotesque, yes, but also magnificent. Where we see death, they see banquet. Where we see ruin, they see rebirth. The discovery of these worms is almost myth itself. In 2002, scientists using submersibles found whale bones littered with what looked like red flowers. Only on closer study did they realize. These were not plants, not coral, but animals unlike any seen before. A lineage so strange that even their relatives are uncertain. Some think they belong to annelids, others to sibiglinids, but their exact ancestry remains disputed. Ostax seems to be a message from evolution itself. There are still worlds you do not understand. Their strategy is as shocking as their appearance. Without mouths or stomachs, they rely on bacterial symbionts. Within their root-like tendrils, live armies of microbes that perform the real digestion. The worms are only farmers, cultivating invisible herds within their bones, harvesting the energy of death itself. Imagine this, a cathedral of skeletons on the seafloor, silent and still. Then, like flowers blooming in winter, Dozens of ostacks rise, their crimson plumes spreading like banners of war, an army of worms turning death into color. Nothing is more mysterious than the skeleton, wrote the French philosopher Paul Valéry, for it is both the shape of life and the sign of its absence. Ostacks worms live at that intersection. They are life wrapped around absence. Their reproduction adds another layer of nightmare. When a female finds fresh bone, she must colonize quickly before competitors arrive. She grows, extends her roots, and inside her chamber, dozens of dwarf males mature, waiting only to fertilize. Their existence is tiny, pitiful, parasitic, but together, they ensure the queen survives. If Darwin once described survival as the triumph of the fittest, Ostax rewrites the law. Survival here is the triumph of the strangest. And Ostax is not alone. There are hints, whispers in DNA, that other related worms exist, still undiscovered. Bones that fell in older epochs, perhaps even dinosaur bones in ancient seas, may have hosted their ancestors. Paleontologists now study fossilized skeletons for Ostax scars, drilled holes in ancient bones. Some believe these worms are not just creatures of the modern ocean, but echoes of a lineage stretching back 100 million years. The zombie worm is older than many predators we know, a living fossil of hunger. In the laboratory, their life cycle is almost impossible to maintain. Their castles of bone collapse without the pressure of the abyss. Their roots shrink, their microbes fade. They are prisoners of the deep creatures of a kingdom we cannot imitate. Friedrich Nietzsche once wrote, that which is falling should also be pushed. The whale carcass falls and Ostax is there to push it into transformation. Death falls and Ostax pushes it into life. It is philosophy written in biology. The abyss wastes nothing. Scientists now wonder how many skeletons have vanished without trace, dissolved in silence by these worms. Every whale that dies may feed them. 
Every shark that drifts to the bottom may be carved away by them. Without O-stacks, the seafloor would be littered with bones, a museum of death. With them, it becomes clean, cycling energy back into life. The zombie worms are janitors of extinction. Their symbolism is terrifying. They remind us that nothing lasts. Not even bones, the hardest parts of us, escape hunger. We live in flesh, we leave behind skeletons, but in the abyss even those monuments are chewed into dust. As Hemingway once said, the world breaks everyone and afterward many are strong at the broken places. For Ostax, the breaking is not tragedy, it is necessity. And yet there is beauty. To see them bloom is to watch roses sprout from a corpse. To see their colonies is to realize that death feeds life, endlessly, in circles we pretend to forget. Confucius said, Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Ostax proves this. It does not hunt, it does not chase, it waits for death and then it blossoms. Simple, uncomplicated, eternal. And here, let me place something necessary. If this story of the zombie worms gripped you, I ask for your support. This channel, like a fragile worm on the bones of the internet, survives only with what you give it. Every like, every share, every gesture is another root digging deeper, another sign that these shadows matter. The link is in the description, and with your support, we can keep uncovering the creatures the world has forgotten. Back in the abyss, the worms continue. Invisible, relentless, faceless. They bloom where whales die. They thrive where giants fall. They are proof of a truth we ignore, that nothing is ever wasted, not even us. Camus once wrote, The struggle itself toward the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. For Ostex, there is no struggle, only acceptance. Bones fall, roots grow, life feeds. A cycle as old as oceans, as cruel as time, and as honest as death itself.